I wonder from almost an AI perspective, but just computationally, is the brain just mostly a prediction machine then? Like is the perception just a nice little feature added on top? Like the, both the, the integration of new perceptual information. I wonder how big of, of an impressive system is that relative to just the big predictor, model constructor? Well, I think that we can we can look to evolution for that, for uh, one answer, which is that when you go back, you know, 550 million years, give or take, we, you know, the world was populated by creatures, really ruled by creatures without brains. Um, and, um, you know, that's a biological statement, not a political statement. <laughs> so like, ruled with you creatures calling without... dinosaurs dumb? You're talking about like... Oh, no, bacteria. I'm not talking about dinosaurs, honey. Yeah. I'm talking way well, back, further back than that. Um, the really, these, there are these little little um, creatures called uh, Amphioxus, which is the modern... It's a, or a lancet. That's the modern animal. But it's an animal that scientists believe is very similar to um, our common, the common ancestor that we share uh, with invertebrates. Um, because, uh, be basically because of uh, the tracing back the molecular genetics in cells. And that animal had no brain. It had some cells that would later turn into a brain, but in that animal, there's no brain. But that animal also had no head, and it had no eyes, and it had no ears, and it had really, really no senses for the most part. It had very, very limited sense of touch, it had an eye spot for, um, not for seeing, but just for um, in training to circadian rhythm to light and dark. Um, and it had no hearing. It had a vestibular cell so that it could keep upright in the water. At the time, we're talking evolutionary scale here. So, you know, give or take some hundred million years or something. But at the time, you know, what are the vertebrate, like when a, when a backbone evolved and a brain evolved, a full brain, that was when a head evolved with sense, with sense organs. And when um, that's when your viscera, like internal systems involved. So the answer I would say is that, um, that senses, nurse, motor neuroscientists, people who study the control of motor behavior, believe that um, senses evolved in the service of motor action. So the idea is that like what triggered the what triggered what was what was the big evolutionary change what was the big pressure uh, that made it useful to have eyes and ears and a visual system and an auditory system and a brain basically and you know and the answer that um, is you know commonly entertained right now is that it was predation that when at some point. An, an animal evolved that deliberately ate another animal. And this launched an arms race between predators and prey, and it became very useful to have senses, right? So these, these little amphioxy, oh, these little amphioxy, it, you know, don't really have, they, they don't have an, they're not aware of their environment very much, really. They, um, uh, and so being able to look up ahead and, you know, ask yourself, you know, is that, you know, should I eat that or will it eat me um, is, is a very useful thing. So the idea um, is that sense, sense, sense data is not there for consciousness. It didn't evolve for the purposes of consciousness. It didn't evolve for the purposes of experiencing anything. Um, it evolved uh, in the cert to be in the service of motor control. However, maybe it's useful. Um, this is why, you know, scientists sometimes, uh, avoid questions about why things evolved that this is what philosophers call this teleology. You might be able to say something about how, uh, things evolve, but not necessarily why we don't really know the why. Uh, that's all speculation. But the why is kind of nice here. This, the interesting thing is uh, that was the first element of social interaction is, am I going to eat you or are you going to eat me? And for that, it's useful to be able to see each other, sense each other. Uh, that's 
kind of fascinating that, that there was a time when life didn't eat each other. <laughs> or they did by accident, right? So an amphioxus, right. for example, will, um, it kind of like gyrates in the water and then it plants itself in the sand like a blade of, like a living blade of grass. Yeah. And then it just filters yeah. uh, whatever comes into its mouth, right? So it is, it is eating, but it's not actively hunting. hunting. And when um, the concentration of food decreases, it, the amphioxus can sense this. And so it basically wriggles itself randomly to some other spot, which pr probabilistically will have more food than wherever it is. So it's not really, you know, it's not guiding its actions um, on the basis of, it's not, we would say there's no real intentional action um, in that, in that, in the traditional sense.